Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick first look at this thing here. This is the Happy Model OVX300 analog video transmitter, 300 milliwatts maximum, but it's the size of your fingernail. Now I like small VTX units. I don't fly with the high powers. Lots of people don't and most places it's illegal to anyway. So these smaller video transmitters are perfect for the tight builds and those models where you need to be light. Look at how I put FPV equipment in things like the ZOHD Talon 250G build. I didn't have a lot of room, so I had to use a really small camera. And in that case, I used a HDLRC Zeus Nano and one of the Speedy B lollipops out the back. And the whole setup was incredibly lightweight. And that is really handy, particularly if you are trying to keep that weight down or you just physically don't have a lot of room. But this VTX is worth a video in my opinion because it's the first one I've had in that's running something a little bit different. But why is it worth a video? Well this little VTX is running Open VTX as the firmware. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the project, OpenVTX is the latest in a whole range of open source projects that we're using in the hobby. Things like Betaflight, iNav, things like ELRS, things like the multi-protocol module stuff, things that we're starting to rely on to be able to fly are open source and this is one of the latest ones. OpenVTX is an open source project for video transmitter firmware. The cool thing is, just like lots of the other projects, it's vendor independent. So where historically you will find that smart audio will be on TBS uh, video transmitters and Tramp will be on IRC transmitters and you'll have uh, either or, depending on whose schemas other vendors are following, this supports both smart audio and Tramp because OpenVTX does. Now the interesting thing is those protocols are licensed from the vendors. They've actually been engineered from the stuff that's already in Betaflight. Uh, OpenVTX also supports race mode, so it'll boot using 25 milliwatts. And the really nice thing that I'm interested in is the video transmitters can be upgraded using a little adapter. So let's talk specifically about this OVX300. I'll put links down below if you want to go and have a look. Available in a couple of different formats. Uh, there's the OVX300, which is the one that I have here, which is the little square one. There's also one that is designed to go on top of a pretty standard setup. So you have kind of the 20 millimeter and the 30.5 millimeter mounting holes, and that's the OVX303. The specs on this, this is a 40 channel 5.8 gigahertz FPV transmitter. It supports zero, race, 25, 100 and 300 milliwatt outputs. Uh, five volt power supply. The current at 300 milliwatts is below about 650 milliamps. So that isn't ridiculous. Uh, you know, like a nice one amp BEC uh, would be able to supply that easily and it weighs less than a gram without an antenna. The size is 14 by 15 by three millimeters deep. And interestingly, on the website, they've also got listed uh, the VTX tables at the bottom, and this is also on the project pages. So when you're using one of these, I would probably post this, uh, or paste this even into your CLI. So I'm yet to try this out, but I really like the idea of a video transmitter that will just work with whatever protocol you want to work with it. You don't have to have an either or situation. And I also really like the idea that it can be upgraded. An integral USB connector or plug would be nice rather than having to use a third party adapter. But a couple of things to be aware of, uh, with this particular video transmitter I have here, it needs to be used with a flight controller. Uh, the protocols, again, are reverse engineered, so I'm interested to see how well they perform. But if they're designed to work with what Betaflight is expecting, that hopefully should work without an issue. The same challenges with this project, I think, as ELRS. Uh, no matter how good the software is, it depends on how good the hardware is and then the interface between the two and how they fit together and 
work is where the rubber meets the road and that is going to be interesting to see how that works. Don't forget there's the VTX tables for beta flight for both Smart Audio and Tramp. There's a different set for each. Uh, check the happy model listing for those. And don't forget it's only 5 volt power for this. Now that's pretty standard for these really small VTX units. They don't have the onboard battery eliminator circuits or BECs to drop the battery voltage down. I tend to use the little Maytech um, BECs, 5 volt BECs, which is about the same size as this video transmitter actually, to do that if I can't find a nice stable 5 volts that will run the VTX cleanly. As mentioned at the start, I really like these super small video transmitter units for lightweight and space constrained builds. It's really interesting to see this project create a vendor independent firmware for video transmitters and I'm looking forward to trying this out but I wanted to share this with you because until recently I wasn't aware of the Open VTX project. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.